I'm working nights on the rich man's side of town. Been driving around. <laughs> Three, four, one. Such a mountain to climb. Such a mountain. Who is Travelin' to Trav? Uh, Travelin' who? He's an encourager, a deeply flawed human being, and a somewhat reluctant yet grateful follower of the one that we have called Jesus. I had the privilege of meeting once again with this young man, a guy I call uh, Philosopher James of Hafer Park. <laughs> <laughs> What a brilliant right, student of life and contributor to the great work. And I love to see what's coming forth here. Yes, we are on our way. Labor and the expression of worth. Strengthening a tribe member deepens a tribe. Depth tribes feed the world. Inclusive organismic depth tribes. Come on. Travel and Trav is a singer, songwriter, poet, essayist, metaphysical therapist, teacher, healer, father, and an advocate for the homeless and neurodivergent. y'all. Labor and the expression of worth. Depth tribes feed the world. Strengthening a tribe member deepens a tribe. Depth tribes feed the world. Together, we are discovering our common work. In the light of friendship, fear is an illusion. Friendship is medicine. I got a fence post, I mean, uh, Hole in the ground. Pick the right piece of wood. <laughs> Gotta make sure it's long enough. Yeah. Rooted but firmly in the, the ground. Man. Man, I'm gonna check your beans, brother. Yes, my brother. Check, check the beans. Man. Thank you for making the food. Yeah. Friendship is medicine. Together, we are discovering our common work, our common stories, and our common love. I'm going to make an attempt to tell a story that I've wanted to tell for quite some time. Consider this a first draft, which has been drafting for quite some time internally. This is a story that I've been writing all my life. It's about friendship. What I've discovered is that sometimes it's difficult to tell the big story when we're lost in our personal stories. So these guys are all my personal friends, so I'm gonna to try to tell a bigger story in the context of these personal friendships because this is where I learned and how I know about friendships. Two of these men, the firefighter and the guy in the tie down there, they introduced me to Jesus. And the two guys with the instruments in their hands, they were a huge part of my coming in to music. Now, these parts are not mutually exclusive by any means. When I was 19 years old, shortly after my parents' divorce, my father went absolutely demonically insane, started blaming me for the loss of his marriage, and he chased me violently around the house in which he had invited me to stay while I tried to complete school. The guys with the instruments, Jason and Kyle, they invited me into their into their apartment to live with them. Later, Chris and I, the guy with the blue tie, we were college roommates studying music together at the University of Central Oklahoma. Brian, the firefighter, has had a screen printing shop in Bethany, Oklahoma, Inkling Design, for many, many years. And early in my Christian walk, I went to work for him just because I wanted to work for and with a brother in Christ. Possibly you have seen some of my previous online work where I was involved with Rob and Tyson and Ian working down in Key West, three brothers who are doing their best to try to help each other out. This is a big part of the story that I'm telling. How do brothers help one another out in real ways? Also, if you've been following my work, you may know about my blood brother, Kyle Martin Irwin, who took his own life several years ago. My brother's death and 
the suffering around his life that was familial, generational, that I am also so very familiar with, the same suffering that chased me around the house uh, all during my youth, this caused me to really focus even more intensely on this life's work of brothers helping brothers. Now, the two guys with the instruments, from conversations that I've had with them, they are averse to making any kind of devoted uh, commitment to, to what we might call God. The firefighter and Chris down below, they have an allegiance to the one we call Jesus and to Christianity. I, me, this particular manifestation of consciousness that you call Trav, Throughout my adult life, I've struggled with migraine headaches and some kind of neurodivergent experience. And I'll use that word neurodivergent right here in just a very general way to describe some kind of alternate life experience than I would say that these four men are having. I have a much more difficult time fitting into the status quo, it appears. I can see clearly that divine expression in each of these men's lives. And the invitation that they extended to me allowed me to become a participating member of their brotherhood. In this communion, they also allowed me to glimpse their shared struggles. I thought y'all left me. There we go, Rob. Thank you for saying it for all of us. That, as far as I understand, that sense that we've been left behind that we're isolated, that we're alienated, that we're not wanted, that we're not a part of, that we're alone, that is the root of all of our suffering. The sense of separate self, this belief that we are separate from our true nature, that we are separate from our God nature, that somehow we are separate from the divine. This is why we suffer. Thank you so much for saying it, Rob. You channel that great divine nature brother driver step out of your vehicle perhaps it is more accurate to say you are that great divine nature you are that great i am we are not separate from god we are not separate from one another you are not alone this is the message that I have received. This is the good news as far as I understand. There was one who walked among us who said, you are not alone. The one we call Jesus, he prayed to the one he called Father and he said, oh Father, I wish they could understand their oneness with you as I understand my oneness with you. And this I have discovered is primarily how we are to function in the lives of one another. We are to keep showing up, to keep reminding one another that we are not alone. Although I may suffer in body with migraine headaches and some sometimes inexplicable neurodivergent experience, I refuse to bow to the victimhood. I will not be a victim of my own devising. If we are to commune, it shall be as equals, eye to eye, in reverence of the great I am that is being born anew every moment in me and you. These particular manifestations of consciousness that we call me. <laughs> working nights on the rich man's side of town been driving around no doubt that you have seen me out late at night on the rich man's side of town lights on my car cruising pennsylvania if you're out late at night and you come through the neighborhood maybe we could talk things over you should never have a reason day or night any season to fear the man and you do what he tell you to do i'm just working for the man it's the only way i can make it through got to feed the kids got to keep us off the skids if you were me you might do this too i used to be like you just a regular guy no guns on my side I like to get high, then the man came knocking at my door. Now I ain't like you no more. No, I ain't like.
like you no more, no more. It's not quite true, is it? When I was on the midnight shift as a young police officer, I asked my shift sergeant how he stayed awake, and he simply said, it's us versus them, officer number 655. Now go out and get them. Tune in next time as I continue this discussion about friendship and brothers and how we help one another's. Ha, ha, ha.